All right, good afternoon, good day, everyone. Uh, thank you for coming to our winter Q1 webinar. Uh, this is Alex Elin with BrickBridge Consulting. Topic of conversation today is gonna be increasing employee, employee engagement using Citrix Workspace with Intelligence and Micro Apps. Uh, like I said, I'm Alex Elin. I'm the lead so solution advisor here at BrickBridge Consulting. I deal with uh, client-facing roles, new co project coordination, uh, billing and licensing, uh, a little bit about our company. If you're not familiar with us, we are a Citrix solution advisor as, all, as well as a Citrix certified development partner. We also run the Citrix Developer Solutions podcast, and we are partnered with Arrow to deliver those Citrix licenses. Some of our other services, like I said, we are a development pa partner. We are an implements, implementation specialist on the Citrix SaaS suite of products. That includes Podio uh, Workspace, ShareFile, Write Signature, and Rike. Uh, in addition to that, and the Citrix licensing we do, we also do AWS development, uh, custom C Sharp uh, architecture, SQL databases, and uh, also we integrate them with any and all of the Citrix SaaS platforms. So what is Citrix Workspace with Intelligence? Citrix Workspace is a single, this is the company byline from Citrix. It's a single secure intelligent work platform that organizes guides and automates the most important information that people need. What that really means, um, I'll give you our own personal view of what Workspace is. Uh, so Citrix took the social media style feed that you see on uh, Twitter and Instagram and Facebook and they implemented implemented it into uh, business software. So instead of going to all the different browser tabs and web applications you may have uh, to source all the information you need, uh, Citrix Workspace brings that into one intelligent feed and lets you interact with it. So how does that deal with employee engagement? So here are a couple quick uh, statistics, little fun facts about increasing employee engagement. So the average number of applications a business worker uh, relies on is nine currently, nine to 10, uh, depending on where you're looking at. And uh, up to 40% of that daily time is lost to contact switching back and forth, copying, pasted, um, business applications that do not speak to each other. So globally, this is estimated to cost almost $7 trillion a year uh, from lost engagement. So some of the benefits, we're gonna go over the, the high level benefits of Citrix Workspace with Intelligence. Um, so the, the digital transformation is happening. Uh, over the past couple of years with the pandemic, some of these trends have accelerated increasingly. Um, so some of the benefits that CWI addresses are improved employee experience, uh, addressing remote security concerns, and being flexible for business. You can read the, the little quotes here about some of the other the large consulting firms and research agencies about these different aspects, but we're gonna go into the benefits of what Workspace has to offer in these areas. So the main four benefits uh, that we see aligned with Citrix Workspace uh, with intelligence is the consumer-like experience across every device. So you're gonna get a, just like when you log into Facebook, or Twitter on your desktop, and then you pull it up on your phone, you're gonna get a very, very similar experience, the same functionality uh, and the same access, uh, whether it's mobile, desktop, uh, or cloud-based application. Uh, in addition, you have a single sign-on to all your apps and data, so you log into the workspace. Workspace uh, activates the Active Directory on the back end, logs in to all the other applications and data and sources that into one pane of glass. Uh, in addition to that, uh, there is a universal search feature. As you can see the little search icon up here, that will search through all the different applications and data that you might have tagged in to the workspace. So instead of searching through the nine or 10 different applications one by one, you can surface that search button and it will go through them all uh, for you. And then contextual security and performance. So each security and the individual performance will be contextualized per that user. 
So these are some of the top challenges and solutions that we have seen and used uh, when it comes to the employee experience using Citrix Workspace. So the main one that comes to mind is too many applications, you know, tech stack management, as we'll call it. So we uh, organize the different application applications, uh, integrate the apps, the content and devices and communication channels into the singular pane of glass. And the outcome is improved engagement. Uh, there are no, you cut down that time from task switching, browser switching, application switching. Uh, the second main challenge we see is too, is too much complexity. Uh, so we personalize the context and contextual content insights and actions so each login is going to have personalized notifications uh, the intelligent feed will learn what is more important or you can have it you can set your settings on the notification on time or let the uh, intelligent feed start to figure out what is most important for you overall this is going to increase the productivity uh, as as the algorithms learn more about the user, it will feed them more information uh, that is pertinent to their role. And then lastly, the one of the other challenges is too many interrupt, interruptions. So with CWI, we're able to automate uh, learned behavior, batched or automated re re repetitive tasks and simplify uh, inquiries. Um, so through the different applications we can layer on here, we can integrate uh, through the API, automate a lot of the repetitive tasks that are can be mind numbing for the employees and allow them to focus on high valued, uh, high value added tasks. Uh, overall, this leads to a higher lifetime value for the employee and hopefully better retention. So why micro apps? Where do they fit into this CWI experience? So for 80% of all business applications, employees are just utilizing four to five key functions. So what are micro apps? Micro apps are small, low code applications that let users perform a single specific function quickly and easily. So if you take that four to five key functions, multiply it by the, the nine to 10 business applications, you can build out and you will see uh, Spencer D uh, and Mr. Alex Davis here show you how you quickly you can either install a previously built application, micro app, or build one from scratch. And so you can take those four to five key functions from those nine to 10 applications and in 40 or 50 micro apps, you can reduce your business employees, 80% of your business employees tasking into one singular pane of glass. Now for some of the high functioning applications or desktop heavy uh, applications. Uh, you're, if you have a developer that needs an IDE or uh, they're heavily invested in one particular web application, those can also be sourced through Workspace and the developer can open a remote desktop, launch their IDE and go to work. Or uh, the graphic designer can launch Adobe inside of Workspace and go to work from there. So. As I led to previously, Spencer D, he's our lead project manager and uh, one of our hackathon winners and micro app designers. He is going to take you through a step by step. Uh, he's going to take you through a step by step on how to build a micro app from scratch from one of our award winning hackathons. And it, the floor is yours, Spencer. Cool. Thank you, Alex. Um, I'll go ahead and get started there. Um, as you mentioned, I'm Spencer D. I'm a lead project manager here at Bridge Consulting. Um, I'm Workspace or MicroApp certified, and I've been on multiple hackathon teams. So I'll just walk you through today how to create a MicroApp and basically um, how to get one started up. So let me share my screen. Let me hide a few panes here. Okay. So this is our weather API that we've built out from scratch. Uh, this was featured on our hackathon videos in the past. Uh, we actually just put it on a Tesla. And um, unfortunately, I'll just be showing it on a computer screen today. But um, we have different information that we've pulled in in the past, such as astro astronomy information, um, current weather and forecasts. Um, we have a weather radar and then weather alerts that go out to users. Um, the one I'm going to be showing off today and how we showing how to build from scratch is some air quality data. So I'm going to pull in some air quality data from a request to our API, 
and show how that can be rendered in the feed and how that could be used um, from a use case scenario. So as you can see here in our description here, the air quality data is by default not returned. So what we need to do is we need to get a response from our forecast and our real-time weather API, and we have to pass a new parameter through it. Luckily, we already have our forecast and our real-time weather API built out. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna take our request from our real-time weather, we're gonna copy that, we're gonna go back to our data loading, and we're gonna add a new endpoint. We're gonna call this one air quality. To add in our request here that we just copied. We need to add in our city variable. Um, for demo purposes today, I'm just gonna call our city Louisville, Kentucky. Um, this can be customizable. You can also have it to where the uh, the user can enter in any sort of city and then it will pull the um, air quality from that city. But just for demo purposes today, we're just gonna do Louisville, Kentucky. And as mentioned in the docs here, the API documentation, we have to add a new parameter, which is our AQI. And we have to make that value equal yes. So we're gonna go down to our query parameters. We're gonna add one, we're gonna call it AQI, and the value will be yes. So you can see here, this, this request should pull in any sort of data on um, air quality. And let's give this a test to make sure it works properly. We'll execute it. And you can see here, we get a success statement, pulls in all of our information from Louisville, Kentucky, the current weather, the wind, precipitation, everything like that. And then you can see right here, in our air quality information. Now we also want to enable incremental synchronization. This basically just allows the API to update constantly, make sure that we're getting the most up-to-date air quality information. We'll go ahead and give that another test just to make sure it works properly. Get a success statement. And we get all the same similar information that we saw earlier with all of our air quality information. Exit out of that. Next thing we're gonna do here is we're gonna generate our tables that pull in the information. So we're gonna get the JSON structure from our gate request. Pulls in all this information as mentioned before, same sort of stuff, and we don't really need to specify a root path for this one. So we're gonna generate our tables. Now, Citrix Workspace, in many cases, it doesn't automatically set a primary key. So we need to go in here and, go in here and customize one. Um, since we made Louisville, Kentucky our um, default location, I'm just going to make Louisville our location here, our, our primary key. So location name, we know it's Louisville, so we'll call that our primary key here today. Save that, and our table should be added. There's our endpoint. And you're going to see here, when I look at the air quality, it's going to pull in no information. So what we need to do here, we need to go to our API. Oh, sorry, I'm going to click there. We need to go to our API. We need to synchronize it to make sure everything is updated. So we're gonna do a full synchronization. And this generally takes a few seconds. And then we'll do an incremental one as well. Perfect. Let's go back in here, check out our data tables. And you'll see here it pulls in all the current air quality information such as ozone levels, CO2 levels, our EPA index, anything that will be useful within the air quality. So let's go ahead and start building on our micro app. So we're gonna add a micro app. Comes out as blank micro app just to start. Let's go down to our properties. We'll just name this one air quality. Give it a little icon just for aesthetic purposes. Um, do an air, so let's make it an airplane, why not? And that should do it, save that. And then another thing I wanna do first before we even get started on any pages or anything like that, we wanna subscribe this micro app to a specific user. So I'm gonna subscribe this to myself. And this just makes sure that any sort of notifications or pages are available within my feed. So this makes it sure that I'm subscribed to this micro app. Let's go back into our air quality and let's start out by building a page. So we're gonna build a page just to display all the information that we're retrieving from our API call. We'll make it a table for formatting and let's just call this one air quality details. 
And then you can see down here, we're going to select the data table that we're going to use to pull in the information. I'm going to use our air quality data table that was showed earlier. And we're going to add this page. You can see here right from the start, our table is already in the page because we did a table type page. Let's call our table air quality data. Seems good. And you can see here we're using our air quality data table already. And let's add some columns. So let's see what kind of information our API call is pulling in. So it's pulling in the carbon monoxide levels. That could be useful. Then we need to go to our specific data column. Our field name for this one is CO. So let's go to data column and you can see here CO. Pulls in our carbon monoxide levels right there. Let's add in another item or another column. And for this one, we're going to do our ozone levels. So our field is O3, and we're going to pull in our ozone levels. So ozone levels. Data column, let's go down here to you can see O3. Pulls in the information. Let's add in one more column here. Um, another one I want to show is the US EPA index. So we can just see right from the start um, how the, the exact quality of our air just from this simple number, whether it's good, moderate, unhealthy, hazardous, whatsoever. So we'll call US EPA index. And the variable that we need, the field name we need is US EPA index. So we'll go to the data column. And we can see the U here, we can, we can basically see that that's using US EPA index. Now I do wanna point out, we can do different formatting here. Um, so let's say for the ozone levels, we want to display two um, decimals. We can make it a decimal format. Um, we can make it an integer format if we just want to display one number. Um, but for today's purposes, we don't need to really add any formatting to this. Now there's a number of different ways that we can view this page. Um, so one thing I want to show off here is we can make this an action page. So we'll enable our air quality details page as an action page and we'll save that. Now what this allows us to do, let's go ahead and give it a couple refreshes. As you can go to your pages over here, view all actions, we'll go down to our weather API. And you can see here we have our air quality showed up and we can just click right in there and view the details. Now we don't want to do that today. Um, what I want to do is go back to the home and we're going to unenable this as our action page. I want to build a notification so that it updates any sort of user or subscriber to check their note to check their air quality. So let's add a notification. Call this air quality reminder. And for today's purposes, we're just going to make it a periodic notification. So it just appears every so often. Let's add in this notification. Um, we're just going to run this every minute just so we can get this uh, notification rendered as quickly as possible. You can see here there's a lot of different options for frequencies and however often you want the notification to pop in. You can do every certain amount of minutes, hourly, every certain amount of hours, daily, weekly, monthly. A lot of different options here. Um, you can do it during work days or you can do it every day. And then you can also put in different time frames. So if you only want to do it from 9 to 5, you only want to do it from certain time frame, you can add that. It also has options for time zones. Let's add in our title here. So remember to check your air quality. And we'll say click here for air quality details. Now here's a big part of it. We want to add in our target page. So what this target page does is every time you click on our notification here, it will shoot up the page that we have listed here. So our air quality details page. So I added in this little description to click here for the details. Um, another thing I wanna point out is if you have any sort of buttons on your target page, so any sort of button that does an action or triggers a notification or anything like that, you have the option to add it in here. Um, our details page doesn't have any buttons on it, so that's not an option for us today. But if you ever, to work, if you ever were to create a page that had a button on it, you could display this button straight in the notification. Now you can see down here some settings for certain subscribers. Um, periodic notifications don't give you the option to do specific subscribers. However, you can make it so that only certain people 
that are subscribed to the micro app receive this notification and that uh, that is done by email. And then you also have the option to do expirations after a certain time interval. So I could say every three days, every three hours, and it's after the creation of the notification. Go ahead and save that before we do anything. Things good to go here. Let's go ahead and save our notification. Last thing I want to do before we check it out in space, is synchronize it one more time to make sure everything's up to get up to snuff. I do want to check one more thing on our notification before we can check it out. Perfect. All right. So we're going to go into our space here. It should take us about a minute because that was the frequency we gave for the notification. And while we wait for the notification to render, um, I'll go ahead and show off just some other stuff that we have with our weather API. Um, one of my favorite features of our weather API is our weather radar. You can see here we use an embed feature to show off wind patterns and anything the continental United States has us here in Louisville, Kentucky. You can look off anywhere. Um, you can go zoom out, zoom in. Check rain, thunder, temperatures, lots of different options here for the weather radar. And then we also have another radar down here. Gives off rain patterns check specific locations. Let's check out Los Angeles. And it'll give us the local rain patterns for Los Angeles. Pretty dry area there though, so not a lot going on. Go back to our home feed. And you can see here, our, weather, or our air quality notification is rendered in the feed after the periodic time has expired. So as a reminder to check your air quality, we can click here for air quality details. So let's give that notification a click. And there are all of our different carbon monoxide levels, ozone levels, and our US EPA index. So this is a pretty simple way of just pulling information in from an API call so that specific users and people can view the information. Um, many different use cases for these weather APIs. This is one of the more, one of the more simple ways to do it. You can see here um, a lot of Online APIs and public APIs have a lot of information or a lot of um, flexibility for information that you can pull in. Um, you can do different, you can pull in time zones, you can pull in astronomy, which you already have built out, history, you can even do sports. So there's a lot of different options for what you can do with public APIs and how that can be utilized in the Citrix workspace. And that is all I have for you today. So thank you very much and uh, go Bengals. Thanks, Spencer. Um, my name is Alex Davis, and I'm going to be showing you how to import a ready-made integration um, from C the Citrix Ready Marketplace. Um, I have I am also Workspace certified. I have a few AWS certifications. Um, I've been on multiple hackathon teams. And uh, yeah, so the first thing you want to do. is go to the Citrix Ready Marketplace. And so you'll just type it into Google. It'll look like this. Um, and when you hit that button, you'll come up to the Citrix Ready Marketplace. Um, and then you'll go to the micro apps portion. And this is where you can look for different micro apps. Um, as you see, New York Times is right here. That's the one we're gonna be dealing with today. But you can also look on the left side, there are filters. If you have a general idea of what you're looking for, but you don't know specifically, you can uh, match up on these filters and find a micro app that works for you. But the filled out, it's all just like an app store, like a normal Apple app store, but this is for the micro app uh, for Citrix, which is really cool. Um, they're, they're ready made, so they, they already have micro apps built into them. Um, sometimes they'll just have one, sometimes they'll have many. The New York Times one specifically has three that we're gonna be looking at. Um, and when you click on one of them, you'll just have to request information, and then you'll be able to get a map file back from the developer 
which will allow you uh, to download that map file and import it. And I'll show you what that looks like in a little bit. But you'll also have different uh, sections here. If you want to look at the product details or the pricing, um, there will also be screenshots that'll show you what the micro app will look like uh, in practice. And then there's features, advantages, and then there's a resource here, which is a demo video of what it looks like actually in use. So what you'll you'll need to do is get that map file from the developer, which will take um, you know a day or so to, to get that from them via email. And then once you get that, uh, you'll be able to go into your Citrix uh, workspace account, which is what this is. Um, in order to make these integrations, there's three different ways. And the first one is from Citrix provided templates. Uh, but you could also create your own, like kind of what Spencer was doing, or you can import a previous configured one, which is what we're going to be doing. So you'll click on that, and then you'll browse your computer, and you will pull up a map file like this one right here. And then once it's uploaded, you can just import it. And then everything that this integration has will be imported into your account. The only thing you'll need to set up is this um, authentication, which I'm going to quickly type in here. Um, this is just a basic authentication that I've set up, but there are actually many different ways to to do this. Um, some more secure than others. Basic, the least secure, but just for demo, we're going to put it as that, and then I will save it, and that will get rid of this um, configuration missing thing. And so it's all set up and ready to go. As you see, it says New York Times two. And that is because uh, New York Times is already an integration in our account here. So New York Times 1, New York Times 2. Um, I'm going to be showing you this too because it comes straight from the map file. Now, as you can see, there are three different micro apps here. Movie reviews, recent popular news, and top stories. And all of them are unsubscribed. And so even if um, you have this set up like this, it will not be going through to the end users until you subscribe them on these micro apps. So what I'm going to do is subscribe myself to all of them. And that way it will show up in my account when we get to the front end. And now they all say subscribe. So now it's all set up. It was just that easy. Um, you can look through on the left side here too. Once you hit edit, um, there are the three data loading endpoints here. Um, you click on one, it'll show you what the template variables are, which were set by whoever created this. In this case, I created this, so these were set by me. Then it will show you the headers, query or header. It'll show you the, the get request or if it's a different type of request. You can test it here. And then it'll show you the tables at the bottom, like Spencer was showing before. And if you wanted to, you could look in here. You could change the primary key if you wanted to, although not advisable to change it unless you know what you're doing there. Um, but yeah, you can look through all those. You can even delete some of these if you didn't need them. Um, and then in the table section, you could click through these. It'll show you different results that are being pulled through from the API, and it shows you all the information you're getting back. Uh, relationship, um, those are a little more out of scope and complex, but they're there if you need them. And then service actions, if uh, the micro app or the integration was using service actions, it would show up here. For this particular one, it's not showing up because I did not set it up. And then configuration is where we did the configuration. There are also webhook listeners and scripting. Um, but those are a little more advanced, and they're not set up on this one either. So once we do all that, we can go back, and we can look inside of these micro apps if we want to. This one has two pages. This little lightning bolt means it's an action page. Um, and then there's properties, too. And then if you want to set up a notification, you could here as well. And it's the same on all these different micro apps. They all look just like that. Um, and then if you need to go to subscriptions, you hit the three dots and do that. You can also export individual micro apps if you wanted to. 
I imported this entire integration, but you could export just one micro app if you wanted to, and or clone it uh, a play, to play, if you wanted to play around with it. Um, so there's a lot of different functionality you can use um, in this workspace. Um, so if you wanted to test these micro apps and see what they look like, um, the way you would do that is you would get, click on these hamburger and go to workspace configuration, which is up here. And then this workspace URL shows you the front end. Pulling up. And I'll need to sign in. And then we will get to the front end here. Now this is the activity feed currently. There's nothing set up on it, but if we click on action, it will show you that um, both New York Times 1 and New York Times 2 are subscribed onto this account. So as you can see at the bottom, it says New York Times 2. That's, that's from the one we just imported. We can click on it, and it will show you the New York Times recent movie reviews. Um, as you go through, um, it gives you the date, a picture of the movie, and the name of the movie. It also has pagination, so you can click down here to go to a new page of movies. And then when you click into one of them, it gives you a back button up here, picture, the movie name, a short summary. And then you can also click on Go to Review, which would take you straight to the New York Times website and this review. So it makes it very easy for you to get to where you want to go. Um, and all of these are, are very similar. That's the movie reviews one. And then here's recent popular news. It's set up a little bit differently. It's just showing you different uh, stories from New York Times. Same go-to article at the bottom here. And you can also go back. And then there's pagination out here. So you can check all the, the recent stories. And then top stories um, has a filter at the top. So if you wanted to uh, filter by business or, you know, whatever, it'll bring up the stories that relate just to that. And similarly, when you click on it, it gives you the title, the headline, gives you the picture, and then at the bottom, go to story here, which will take you straight to the New York Times website. So it's very easy. Um, all you have to do is contact the developer through Citrix Ready Marketplace. And then once you get that map file, um, you can import the map file and it will bring up the integration and the micro app. And then um, you'll just need to do the authentication. And then basically uh, you can make any customizations you want in it, but um, it's, it's very easy and already, already basically created. Um, you can make adjustments, but the the most of it is already done so it's very very simple and all you have to do is get the map file and it'll all be set up and that's all i've got Thank you, Spencer and Alex, for those wonderful demonstration. Uh, just to summarize, we go back to the why the micro apps. So as you can see from the demonstrations done by Alex and Spencer, uh, we created in the last 25, 30 minutes, we created a brand new micro app from scratch and uploaded three pre-built micro apps from the Citrix Ready Marketplace. So when we talked about that, uh, you know, four to five key functions from, you know, maybe nine to 10 business applications. We just did 10% of that in the last 30 minutes. So we appreciate you all coming out to our webinar. Uh, our next one will be April at the end of April. Uh, if you would like to know more about the work we're doing with micro apps, Citrix Workspace, or any of the services we provide, you can reach us by phone, email, our website, you can also follow us on LinkedIn, Facebook, and Twitter. If you are watching the replay on YouTube, all of this will be linked in the show notes. Uh, we will also be running the International Podio Developer Meetup 
uh, in May as well. So thank you all very much for coming out today. I hope everyone has a great day. Uh, stay safe, everybody. Thank you. Go Bengals. Thank you. Bye.